week seven is done. Now, how do I start this video? Welcome to Resi Studio. So yes, like I said in the introduction, week seven is actually done and it was actually fun week seven we were actually diving in how to read and and using unity web requests to communicate with paypal api and able to create and execute the payments now during this week it was actually we all are known that we cannot use paypal in some other stores like in the app store uh, play store or steam but the whole point is to actually know how to read the api so this experience we can actually put it all together and actually feel confident in reading others api if you want to use unique web requests i will try my best to actually explain everything since if i see that this video is too long then i will actually publish or do a blog post so with a little more in depth so Bear with me because there's a lot of windows that I need to show you guys in order to understand how this process work. First things first, when you get to, I will actually leave the li links below. You need to actually follow the steps that PayPal developers account tells you about. You need to set up your environment and then you can uh, follow the structure to create the payment um, using Unity Work Request, you need to get approval for the payment and then execute the payment. Now, before you go into step three to four, you need to actually set up your developer's environment in which you need to create the PayPal's developer's account. You need to create what is called in here a sandbox account in which you can test everything related to API, do fake payments, fake interaction with a fake customer in order to see if the communication between your application and an API actually works. When you create your environment um, and you create a section about your application, you're gonna get access to something called client ID and the secret. Those two things are very important, but those things are in a way is your seal that this shop is yours. That's your credential in that you need to use to communicate with Unity web request. Before going to step number two, in which you need to create the PayPal payment, you need to actually get a token authorization that will allow you to go to step number two, three, and four. This is the part that they told us that we actually need to learn how to read it out. It's used about curl. How can you pass this to C sharp and then to Unity web request? So here we are in the section to actually get the token and which you're gonna use throughout the whole process to actually get the payment, execute the payment, and everything. Now, first thing first, you're gonna notice that it's in a curve. We're actually gonna need to read this out aloud in order to explain it. So I'm gonna pass throughout how is that you're gonna get done. If in a way you have any question regarding about this, I will ask you to leave in the comments below or wait out until I make the blog post in order to explain this a lot better. So first thing is that when you're using Unity Web Request, you're gonna notice that the request they're taking here is a post type request. So that's where you're gonna use first. When you're using PayPal Request, next Unity Web Request actual post, you're gonna pass this URL that you're gonna see here in the curl and then this is gonna ask you for a second parameter. Now, if we're gonna read this out loud, we're noting that you have two heads that you actually need to apply in this post request. You have the credential of the client ID and the secret for the user, and then you're gonna have a body data of a single string called grant type client credential. Now, you think that by following this order is the same order that you actually need to follow using Unity request, but there's a cache. Now, when you're using Unity Web request, before calling the request, you actually need to put your your body data first up here, where I have my my cursor around here. So this is the first thing that you're gonna pass when you're gonna do the post request. Now, second, then you're gonna pass the three headers that they're gonna ask you in here. You're gonna pass the first header as zip application JSON, as zip language. Now, you need to actually be careful and actually copy paste to be sure that you need to actually 
since it's case sensitive. Now, once you pass the two headers, the third header actually is the authorization authorization basis that you need to actually pass the client ID and the user. Why do we know that the authorization is a basic authorization? If we go here to the Postman section, they're going to tell you that the, that the type of authorization is a basic auth. So that's what you're going to use for the Unity web request. You think that all you need to do is to actually write out everything about the client ID as a string just like this, but no. Everything related to a user credential, a um, username or password, need to pass for a converter of a string as uh, as a byte converter, if I'm not mistaken. Why is that? We have no idea. That is how the communication between servers it is. One well, instructor told us that he wants to ask about this for, he says that that's how it's been done. Once you pass your normal header request, then you're going to do the second header and which is the authorization basic. I'm going to put it uh, bigger so you can see it. So once we have everything done, then we're going to geo return the send web request and then we're going to do two if statement. The first statement is to check if there was an error between the communication to actually test it out. Once we have the, the communication, then we're actually going to store the token. We're going to receive a JSON response in which we actually need to store it in order to have access to the token. Now, you may be wondering, um, this is where it gets a little more complicated because once you have a return, a JSON response, you need to actually pass the JSON response into a class and that class is going to fill out all the information about the response and then you're going to have access to that class and then you're going to store the access token inside a string that you're going to have it um, on top of your PayPal manager. I'm going to leave the video around here. Um, to get the approval of the payment, there's a few steps that we actually need to take that are not inside of Unity Web Request itself. The approval, you actually need to use one of the URLs that you received in a JSON response and pass it and open it in a web, web browser in which your fake client account actually needs to input its user, user and his password in order to approve the payment. Once the payment is done, then the second section of the executed payment, that's where Unity has to come in and play. So I'm going to leave it here. Um, I apologize the way I explain everything. That's something that I need to work on and to actually work and how to explain um, code a little more easily. Since it's a lot to take in, I should have at least make this a two part video, but I did not because I thought oh, I can do it all in a single ROM, but no. But since this is, this is a small recap, I will try to do at least do this in part. So to help you out with the APIs, I think I'm going to do like a two to three sections of this video because I'm going to do the, the steps, but in small sections of video. So let's see how I do it, but I, I tried my best now and I think didn't do justice to how our instructor did it but i tried i really tried so let's see how i do the next video so once again thank you for hearing me out until the next one have a lovely day i am sorry